Hi, I'm Mike Madewell from the Technical Support Department. In this section, we'll show you how to configure a flow sensor to an i controller once it's connected. We'll be covering how to program the stations to be either monitored or not monitored individually. We'll cover the overflow and underflow percentages, as well as the startup delay for each station. And in the end, we'll talk about how to initiate a learn flow sequence. The i controller is capable of monitoring flow through a Hunter Flow Sensor, or HFS but some non-Hunter flow sensors can also be used with this controller. The flow sensor is placed in the main line after the master valve and it is installed into a fitting. The size and material of this fitting can vary depending on the application requirements. It is important to make note of the fitting being used as this information will need to be entered when configuring the sensor. The flow sensor is connected directly to the controller through a pair of wires, a red and a black one. When connecting a sensor, it is important that you remove the jumper wire that connects the two screws. Also, when no sensor is connected, the jumper must be in place. The sensor wires are routed to a set of sensor terminals in the wiring compartment, either S1 or S2. If you have the metal or plastic pedestal version, you will find a third set of sensor terminals like this one. We will connect our flow sensor to S2 because there is already a sensor connected to the first set of sensor terminals. The red wire goes to the red sensor terminal and the black wire to the black sensor terminal. If you have extended the flow sensor wiring with another cable, be sure to keep the red and black wire straight or the sensor cannot be read. Once the sensor is connected, we'll need to configure it inside the face pack to select the right flow sensor. To do this, turn the dial to advanced features. Then use the down arrow button to select sensor configuration and press the plus button to access it. We already have a click sensor attached to the first sensor terminal and the Hunter Flow sensor is attached to the second sensor terminal. Therefore, we would leave SIN1 configured as it is and SIN2 as an HFS sensor along with its corresponding fitting size. Notice that we can choose among different flow sensor options depending on the size of the fitting. For example, if you are using a 1 inch schedule 40 sensor body, then you would choose HFS FCT100. If you are using an inch and a half schedule 40 fitting, then you would choose HFS FCT150. For an inch and a half schedule 80, you would choose the HFS FCT158, and so on. You can check the owner's manual for a complete list of sensor options. On the other hand, if you are using a non Hunter Flow sensor, choose Custom 1. Press the right arrow button to configure it by entering the K factor and the offset specified by the manufacturer of your particular flow sensor. The custom 2 and custom 3 settings are not normally used, but can be used if you choose to use multiple flow inputs with different sized meters. Keep in mind there is only one master valve output, but it is possible to connect a flow meter to each sensor input in the i -Core. To go back to sensor configuration screen, Press the down arrow button until you reach return. To stick to our example, we'll configure the second sensor input as a Hunter Flow sensor with a 1 inch Schedule 40 fitting. Once the sensor is configured, we'll need to tell each station how to respond to that sensor. To set the response for our flow sensor, we need to go to Advanced Features and press the down arrow button to select Flow Operation and press the plus button to access it. Here we can tell each station whether to monitor flow or not. We use the plus or minus buttons to say yes or no to flow monitoring for that station, and we use the right arrow button to advance to the next station. You'll notice that whenever monitoring is enabled, you'll get more options at the bottom of the display. The first option is the expected gallons per minute, and you'll notice that it is blank. This is because we have not gone through the learning process for each station as of yet. The next option is overflow, and this is the limit at which the controller reacts when overflow conditions are detected. The default is 115%, which means that if the controller records flow conditions that are 15% over the expected flow, it will send an overflow alarm and shut down irrigation for that station. You can change this number from 110 to 300%. Likewise, the underflow is the limit at which the controller reacts when underflow conditions are detected. The default is 
which means that if the controller records flow conditions 50% under the expected flow, it will send an overflow alarm and shut down the irrigation for that station. You can change this number from 10% to 100%. The start delay is a period of time that is programmed to allow the system to stabilize in case there was unstable flow within the main line after turning on that station. The default is one minute, which means that flow will be ignored for alarm purposes for the first minute after a station turns on. If an underflow or overflow condition continues to be recorded past the one minute delay, then the controller will shut down that station. So in order for the controller to learn the flow for each of the stations that you choose to be monitored, they have to have a runtime. You'll need to put at least a minute on each of those stations that you'll want to have the flow learned. To learn the expected flow, turn the dial to manual operation, press the down arrow button to select learn expected flow, and press the plus button to access it. You will be prompted to turn the dial to run if you want to learn all stations. If you only want to learn flow for a particular station, you can use the right arrow button to find the station you want to learn and then turn the dial to run. In our case, we want the controller to learn the expected flow for all the stations that we set to be monitored. Therefore, we simply turn the dial to run. The controller will start to activate each of the stations for a short period of time to learn the flow for each. So once the controller has learned the expected flow, we can go back and review the expected gallons for each zone. Turn the dial again to Advanced Features and select Flow Operation. What we see here is the expected flow that the controller learned for each individual station. Let's use Station 1 for example. The controller learned 11.26 gallons per minute for Station 1. If we leave the default settings as they are, in the future, whenever the sensor detects a flow of 14 gallons per minute on this station, it will shut down the station, wait one minute, then restart the station to see if it was only an erratic fluctuation. If the overflow continues after the minute, then the controller will display an overflow alarm and will shut down irrigation. This is because the system is flowing 15% above the expected flow. The same principle applies to underflows. If the sensor detects a flow of less than 6 gallons per minute due to a valve not opening, then it will shut down, wait a minute, and then restart the station. The controller would then show an underflow alarm because the system is running 50% under the expected flow. Again, you can change the limits at which an overflow or underflow occurs per station. If your limits are set too closely to the learned flow or the actual flow, there's a higher chance you'll have an alarm condition existing. So you want to set your high and low overflow and underflow limits in a big enough window to where it'll allow normal operation with fluctuations in your water source. Whenever a station is running, the display will show you exactly the amount of gallons per minute that the zone is flowing. In addition, the flow LED in the system status section will be green whenever the flow is normal. And if it detects an overflow, the LED will turn red. Whenever the controller detects an overflow on a particular station, it will shut the station down and move to the next station. However, other stations that were either not set to be monitored or that do not have an overflow condition will continue to operate normally. If you have further questions about how to set up the flow sensor on the i refer to the owner's manual which can be found on the Hunter website along with many other i resources.